Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, War Miracle the McFarland, DC Multiverse, Kilowog, and Green Lantern 2 pack. This is a gold label Amazon exclusive. I pre ordered it, and it arrived today. So let's take a look at the packaging. As you can see at the top, part of the gold label collection. A gold label figure is simply a retailer exclusive. Whether we target or Walmart, this particular gold label is an Amazon exclusive. Ages 12 plus, DC Multiverse, Kilowog, and Green Lantern. Which is an odd way to describe them because Kilowog is a Green Lantern. It should say Kilowog and Kyle Rayner, but whatever. We have Kilowog here, Kyle Rayner, a lot of reuse on him, and then a ton of Green Lantern construct accessories. One side of the package, Kilowog and Green Lantern. Other side, same thing. At the bottom, there is the barcode, if that helps anybody. And on the back side, here are the two characters posed up. Now, personally, I would have preferred to have had Kilowog and Guy Gardner or something like that, something we hadn't received before, but it's all good. At least we finally have Kilowog. He's coming home today. So, without further ado, let's open it up. All right. Now that these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. They both come with a display stand and collector's card. Kilowog here has a large hammer and a large lantern battery, and I'm hoping that big sword will work with him. And then Kyle has lantern armor pieces, battery sword, and one alternate hand. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation, and we'll compare them with a bunch of other Green Lantern and a bunch of other action figures from different various companies. So, we've already gotten plenty of Kyle figures before. The real meat and potatoes of this set is Kilowog, so let's start off with him. Before we look at Kilowog, let's check out some of their non-accessory accessories. They both come with a display stand. It's a black circle, thin, basic, but pretty effective. Then we have their collector's cards. You can see Kilowog on the left, next to John Stewart, and then Kyle's card on the right. And here's the back side of the collector's card, in case you guys want to read them. So here's Kilowog. Kilowog is a large, oversized deluxe mega figure. He comes with a hammer, lantern battery, and a sword. Kilowog is a brilliant geneticist from the planet Bellavox Vic. I guess he's a Bellavoxian. His planet was destroyed during the Crisis on Infinite Earth storyline, and Kilowog's main role in the Lantern Corps is training new members. So let's take a look. He has this sort of pig shape to him. Pink skin, tusks, ears. He looks big, tough, mean. Face sculpt's fantastic. Big old cheeks. I don't know if the tusks maybe should be painted a different color, but as a whole, he looks fantastic. Look at that big nose. And then he has the texturing all over his suit, like a lot of the other Lantern figures. Lantern logo in the middle, some smooth parts, and then texturing on a lot of other parts as well. It actually looks fantastic. His abs look good, nice sculpt, nice paint. It's not just pure green. There's a nice little wash and shading on there. You see his lantern power ring on his finger. He only has four fingers instead of a human's five. Ton of texturing on the legs, double jointed knees. Looks like single jointed elbows. As a whole, I am very pleased and impressed with this Kilowog. If only you didn't have to get a two pack to get him, but it is what it is. This guy, they definitely delivered on. Now I've seen a lot of people online saying, I'm not gonna buy this pack, it's $70. I'm gonna wait until they release a Kilowog by himself. And that would be ideal. But if you're gonna do that, you're gonna wait a really long time. McFarlane is trying to force you to pay extra to buy this pack because they have Kilowog, which is a character everybody wants, and the figure looks absolutely fantastic. The 70 price point is inexcusable. It should be $60 because we have a mega figure and a regular figure. I'm not sure where the other $10 comes from, and Kyle is also pure reuse. But if you're going to wait for them to release Kilowog by himself, it's probably going to be at least a couple years, if not longer. Take the Batwoman 3-pack. Everyone wants Batwoman. Nobody wanted to buy Batman and Clayface again. But if you want Batwoman, that's the price you have to pay. Yes, eventually they probably will release a single Batwoman, but I promise you they're going to wait at least two to three years after the initial release because they don't want people to know they're going to do that as people would not buy the multipacks first. It's a big gimmick, but if you want them, get them. Yeah, this will probably eventually go a little bit cheaper, like $50. But this guy's badass. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Very well done. Another home run for McFarlane. I did want to point out something small that I noticed. 
the texturing on the majority of the suit sort of has these little lines going up and down all over it. Same here. The texture of the gloves is quite a bit different. Just something mildly interesting. Now for his accessories. We have the hammer, the power ring, and the large sword. They're all cast in a semi-transparent plastic. It looks good. This one has a green logo on it. A lot of sculpting detail on this thing, and it's a construct, so it's just very well done. Large lantern battery. Doesn't do much for me, but it is good to get a larger one for him. And we have the sword. And I'm a little concerned this might not fit in his hand. I believe this large oversized sword came with a previous Kyle Rayner figure. But it's much more appropriate for Kilowog because it's so big. Here's Kilowog holding that lantern battery. Now, sometimes with these mega figures, their hands are so hard to get the accessories in, they're hard as a rock. But this guy's hand is sort of semi gummy. I think that works really good for putting the accessories in and out. And then here's Kilowog holding that sword. Fits in his hand very well. And then here, holding that hammer. The hammer is my favorite of his three accessories. That thing is fantastic. A lot of detail on it. Now they've taken a pretty good look at the figure and his accessories. Now let's check out his height, and he is a big boy. From bottom to the top of his head, standing right about 8.9 inches tall, which can translate to about 22 and a half centimeters. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, of course, it can rotate side to side. He can look up and down, really up, not at all, down a little bit. Can sort of tilt his head from side to side. Shoulders on a ball joint goes up about 90 degrees, up, down, around. He's got that butterfly ring between the shoulder and chest. Increase the range of motion and cover a large gap. Bicep cut. Single jointed elbow goes in a little bit less than 90 degrees. His wrists rotate and is hinged. Torso, double ball joint, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, very nice range of motion in the torso area. Legs, almost completely does the splits. McFarland style hip joints. Rotation, minimal, but there. His legs go forward. Not that far. It's about that much. Back, not at all. Double jointed knees. And then his ankle. Forward and back. Tilt rock. Guess there's no real rotation there. And toe articulation. The only other Kilowog figure that I have is this Mattel version. I'm not sure specifically which one it is, but it was customized into Tusk from the animated film Batman Bad Blood. Here's Kilowog, next to the two most recent mega figures. The Sunken Citadel Pirate from Aquaman 2, and the glow-in-the-dark version of the Titan Joker. Before that, they released Clayface in the Batwoman 3-pack and the glow-in-the-dark Swamp Thing. And the last traditional wave of mega figures was Anti-Monitor and the Justice Buster. It's been a long time since we had a wave of two mega figures. And now, here's Kilowog next to Necron and Atrocitus. Necron is not exactly part of the Blacklander core, but definitely related to them. He reanimates most of the bodies that turn into Black Lanterns. And Atrocitus here is a mega figure, part of the Red Lantern core. So not to take a look at the Kyle Rayner Green Lantern. He has construct armor and a sword, one ultra right hand, and then the lantern battery. So Kyle Rayner sort of the lantern of the 90s. When Hal Jordan became Parallax, Carl Rayner stepped in, and now we have Carl Rayner, Guy Gardner, Hal Jordan, and Jon Stewart, all as green lanterns at the same time protecting Earth. This guy is the, I think, fourth time they've released a Carl Rayner figure, and they all have the same body. Head and face could look good. Hair looks good. Uh, I don't know if you call it domino mask exactly. Large, green, it's got black around the eyes, and then white eyes. His uniform is very similar to the Target exclusive version, although his green is a lot darker and matches the other lantern. So if you're trying to build a core, this is the one you want. Green lantern logo on the chest, double jointed elbows, double jointed knees. As a whole looks good, it is more of the same. He's got a little bit of texturing on the black parts of his suit, a little bit of green armor. Like I said, this is the one you want if you're building a lantern core. And a closer look at his face and head sculpt. Same face and head sculpt we had before. It's actually pretty well done. Between the domino mask and the hair, it looks a lot like Nightwing. Like I said, I think the face is spot on for Carl Rayner. This is actually the head sculpt from both the first release of Carl Rayner and the Blackest Nightwave, as well as the Blue Lantern version. 
the Tardis Uzo version has a little bit of a different head on him. And here's Kyle, broken down as far as he can go with all of his removable parts detached. Now check out his accessories. And let's start with his hands. He has a total of three hands, one left hand, and two right hands. Here he is, with his first pair of hands. This is a pair of gripping hands for his accessories. And here's his alternate right hand. This is a fisted hand. You can see the power ring on his index finger. And then let's check out his lantern constructs. These are all reused from previous Green Lantern figures, and that's fine. We have a sort of samurai armor. Never really been a fan of this accessory. It has a lantern logo, semi transparent. Nice sculpt, but like I said, just not really a big fan. Then we have his lantern battery, and it's a little bit different than the other Green Lanterns. Then we also have this sword. The sword is a lot smaller and is semi transparent. Here's Kyle holding that lantern battery, and here's Kyle with both the armor and the sword. Samurai Ninja Green Lantern. I kind of rolled my eyes when I said that. Now I'm going to check out the similarities and differences between the previous version of Kyle Rayner. I chose the Tardis exclusive gold label version because it's mostly the same figure, same body, just a different head. They took the head from the Blackest Night version, popped it on there, and then repaid him in darker colors. The only differences besides the head are the darker greens. So let's take a look. Like I said, heads are a little bit different. The hair is pretty much the same, but this guy has sort of a smile. This guy's a closed mouth. The only other difference is going to be this guy's a darker green, and this guy has sort of a puke green. This guy will fit a lot better with your lantern core, as this green is consistent with the other ones. This guy always stood out like a sore thumb. He even has armor on the knees, armor on the elbows, etc. Like I said, same figure, different shade, different head. Next, let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, staying at about 7.2 inches tall, which can translate to around 18 centimeters. And now for his articulation. Starting with his head, he can rotate side to side. He can look up a little bit, down. He can tilt his head from one side to the other. Shoulders on a ball joint goes out 90 degrees. Up, down, around. He's got that butterfly ring between his shoulder and chest. Increase the range of motion, cover with a large gap. Bicep cut, double jointed elbows. His wrists can rotate and it's going to be hinged. Ball joint is torso, rotate around, forward and back. Another one is waist, rotate around, forward and back. Between the two, good range of motion. I get a lot more out of the waist than the torso on this guy. Legs complete as the splits, McFarland style hip joints. Rotation's decent on him. Legs go forward about that far, back not much. Double jointed knees, and then his ankle forward and back. Rotate, tilt, rock, and of course, to articulation. Here's this new Cobb Rainer, next to the first release. This is from the Blackest Night Wave. These have the same head. And they do share a lot of parts of the body, but they have some differences as well. The hands, the forearms, and the boots. Then, next to the second release of Kyle Rayner, this is a gold label Target exclusive. This has a new head, but shares the same body of the two-pack green lantern. And now, next to Kyle Rayner as a blue lantern. This one has the same body as the Blackest Night Kyle Rayner. And the same head as the two-pack Kyle Rayner. So here are all the different Kyle Rayner figures they've done so far. We have four of them. I would say this two-pack version is my favorite because he's most consistent and will go along with the rest of the Green Lantern Corps the best. Here's a look at Kilowog and Kyle Rayner. They're in the outskirts of space, getting ready to head home and defend their sector. Now let's check them out. Next to some other action figures, starting off with some of the Green Lantern figures. Here are all the Kyle Rayner figures in release order. Blackest Knight, Tardy Exclusive, Blue Lantern, and the two-pack. They also use the same body to make Sinestro in both his Green Lantern and Yellow Lantern looks, and I believe they use the same body for the upcoming Jon Stewart in the Plastic Man wave. Here's Kilowog and Kyle Rayner next to Hal Jordan, arguably the main, most known, and most popular Green Lantern out there. And here they are, next to Jon Stewart, probably the second most known Green Lantern, especially after Justice League Unlimited. Here they are, next to Alan Scott, the original OG Green Lantern. Then, next to Sinestro as a Green Lantern. And now, next to a couple of versions of Bruce Wayne as Green Lantern, as Dawnbreaker, and as Batman from the main universe. So here's our Green Lantern core. These are the main, modern Green Lanterns that are part of the core. Kilowog, Hal Jordan, John Stewart, and Carl Rayner. I would say the most glaring omission is Guy Gardner, 
although I wouldn't mind Jessica Cruz and Simon Boz as well. So finally, we have a consistent version of the Green Lantern Corps. Four members that look like they belong together, the same shade of green, took them this long. Here are all of the different Green Lantern figures McFarland has made so far. I believe the next one's come out. It's going to be the DC Classics Hal Jordan and the Plastic Man Wave John Stewart. And then here are all of McFarland's Lantern figures. Black, red, yellow, blue, and green. There is a White Lantern figure coming in the near future, and that's the Platinum Chase variant of the Collector's Edition Captain Boomerang. I didn't even know that guy was a White Lantern at one point, but it's a pretty cool idea for a variant. Now let's check them out. Next is well, their recently released McFarland DC Multiverse figures. Here they are. Next is the Walmart exclusive DC vs. Vampire's Nightwing and Wally West Flash. Here's Kilowog and Kyle. Next to the Amazon exclusive Glow in the Dark Parallax Hal Jordan. The McFarland Toy Store and GameStop exclusive Arkham Knight in his prestige suit. And then the GameStop exclusive DC Rebirth Batman Frostbite Edition. And here they are. Next to the Crisis on Infinite Earth's Wave. Collective Build Monitor. And I did forget, there's a Platinum of Chase here and a Spectre here, which is Hal Jordan and Spectre, another Green Lantern figure. Then, next to the most recent Batman Wave, we have the Anne Hathaway Dark Knight Rises Catwoman, both the Platinum and Batpod editions. Ben Affleck, Batfleck, and then the Christian Bale Batman, Hong Kong Skydive, both the Platinum and Unmasked versions. And finally, next to the DC Classics Smiling Superman and the Nightfall Nightwing. Now let's check them out. Next is some action figures from different various companies, so we can see how they fit in, both scale and style-wise. In case you want to know what signs you can mix them with, since they're McFarlane toys, they're typically the 7-inch scale. I'm going to start my comparisons with some of the large action figure lines I collect, and work way smaller. But first, let's check them out with some of their McFarland Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all for McFarland Toys, all 7-inch scale. And now, with some Jack-specific wrestling figures and some DST or Diamond Select toys. Here they are, next to a can of green soda. Seemed appropriate for a Green Lantern review. And here they are, next to some DC Direct and NECA figures. Then, with both some Mattel and Jazzwares wrestling figures. And now with some Mezco and Mattel DC figures. Next, with some Mafex and Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, next is some SH figure arts action figures and some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, it's a really nice action figure two pack. Now my complaints would be, the price, $70, not sure why it's $70, it should be 60, a $40 mega figure and a $20 regular figure, but it's a nice enough set that I can get past that. Carl Rayner is pure reuse, but it is the best Kyle Rayner they've released so far. It goes well with the rest of the Lantern Corps, and it matches Kilowog, Hal Jordan, and John Stewart. Their accessories are fantastic. Their articulation is very good. Sculpt page job, also excellent. If I were to rate these figures, I'd probably give Kilowog an 8.5, and then Kyle Rayner a 7.5, only because we've already gotten so many Kyle Rayners in the same body before. Averaging the set out to a solid 8 out of 10, which is a pretty high rating in my book. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I'll talk to you guys real soon.